Hi there. In this tutorial, we are going to create an app that will allow you to take surveys. To create a survey app, we will be using Airtable. Airtable is a spreadsheet service that allows you to collect, store, and update data. To set up an Airtable account, click the link in the tutorials page. Now let's do this together. Let's click where it says free Airtable to get started. Then in the upper right corner, let's click sign up. Now just write in a name and email and create a password. Great. We can just click skip for now so we can go straight to building. Now Airtable has some pretty great tutorials for figuring out other things and those can be found over here. To get started connecting your Airtable to Thunkable, let's click add a base. Then select Start from Scratch. Great. Now let's name this base Thunkable App. Click Enter and then open it up. Now you can use Airtable to do all sorts of things with your app. For this tutorial, we are going to connect this database with our app so that when someone answers a survey question on our app, their answer will show up here. So now let's go back to Thunkable. Drag the spreadsheet component into the phone. There are four pieces of information that you will need to fill out if you want to connect your app with your Airtable account. Those are the API key, base key, table name, and view name. Let's get our API key to begin with. In order to do so, we must go back to Airtable. In the upper right corner, click the account icon and then click account. Right here, we have the generate API key. Let's click it. Now you should be very careful with your API key. Do not share it with anyone because it is a key to access all of your projects and data. Now, copy your API key and let's go back to Thunkable. In the section that says API key, paste the code here. Now let's go back to Thunkable's Airtable guide found in the documentation in order to get the base ID. Let's scroll down from where we were before. To retrieve the base ID, you'll actually have to go to the Airtable API documentation page. So let's click this link. And let's click on the project that we just made, Thunkable App. And now you're on a page that should look like this. Over here, it says node.js. Click this tab. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you will see this headline. It says, example using environment variable. Just a few lines down, you will see the word base. What you want to do is to copy the text that's in between the quotes over here. Don't copy the quotes, copy everything between the quotes. Again, copy everything between these quotes. Now let's go back to Thunkable and paste this code into the opening for base ID. Great. Now for these last two sections, table name and view name, let's go back to that Airtable spreadsheet we created. The table name is just going to be the name of the table, which in this case is just table one. So let's just copy the name and go back to Thunkable and paste that in. And where it says view name, we don't have to change anything. This will just say grid view. Awesome. Now your app should be connected to your Airtable spreadsheet. So now it's time to go build this app. 
go to the layout section and drag a row component onto the screen. Make sure the row takes up the entire screen. Next, drag two columns and place them both within the row component. One column is for the questions that will be asked. The other column is for the answers. To build a survey app, you now need a series of labels and text inputs. Labels are for the questions. Let's ask three questions, so go ahead and put three labels into column two. To answer these questions, the user will write in the text input components. Let's put three text input components into column one. You should also have a button at the bottom of the screen as a submit button that can submit the answers. So let's drag a button onto the bottom of the screen. And let's change the text of the button to say submit. Finally, drag one more label to display whether or not the data was entered successfully. Now it's time to block it out. In the button one drawer, drag a when button one click and drop it onto the blocks editor. When we hit the submit button, we want the spreadsheet to be updated with our new answers. Under the spreadsheet drawer, drag the in spreadsheet one call create row. Next, go under the objects drawer and drag the create object block. Place this into the opening that says row object. Then click on the block settings tool, which is the little star over here. Let's get three of these blocks that say property name and drop them under the create object block. Each one of these blocks is a different question asked on the survey. Let's have the first three questions asked for the user's first name, last name, and country. To do this, we rename these three blocks. Let's just have the first object say first name. Let's have the second object say last name. And let's have the third object say country. For each question, we want to save the user's response. So we need to connect what the user writes to each question. The user will be writing in the text input components so let's go to the drawer for the text input one and grab get text input one get text block and drop it into the first opening. Let's do the same thing for text two and text three inputs. Now each of these objects, first name, last name, and country, must also match the name of the columns on Airtable. What exactly does that mean? Let's go back to our Airtable spreadsheet. See how this column says name? Let's change it to say first name. Now we need to add two more columns, one for last name and one for country. So let's right click and select the insert right option. And we can write in last name. Let's do this one more time. And this time, let's write in country. Great. Now let's go back to Thunkable. How will we know if this app is working? We can have our app tell us. We want to say, if there was an error, set the labels text to say error. First, let's get an if block from the control section and drop it into the spreadsheet block. Next, we need an error block. So drag this error block and drop it into the if opening. Next, go to the drawer for label four and select the from label four set text to block and drop it into the do section. 
If there is an error, let's have the label say error. So drag and drop an error block into the opening of the text block. Great. Now, we also want to say, if there isn't an error, set the label's text to say, you've successfully entered the data. To do this, we need an else block. Click on the block options for the if block and drag and drop an else block. This allows us to say, if there is an error, set the label to error. Otherwise, do something else. And again, for else, which means otherwise, we want to set the label's text to, you have successfully entered the data. Let's just copy and paste this label block and drop it into the else opening. And we can get a blank text box from the text drawer and drop that in. Let's write, you've successfully entered the data. Once that data is entered into the spreadsheet, the text inputs need to be cleared for the next person to take the survey. Go to the drawer for text input one, drag and drop from text input one, set text two block under the spreadsheet block. Let's just copy and paste this block two more times and drop them underneath. And in the drop down menu for each block, Let's change these blocks so that they represent text input two and text input three, the three text input components. Great. So now when we click the button, our survey answers will be sent to the spreadsheet and then cleared away for the next person to take the survey. Click the live test button to test your app.